Not only are we behind the curtains, we are behind the 3,000 gallon. So welcome to my member-only video that I'm going to use to announce the members option on YouTube for Aquarium Domain. So uh, YouTube has made available to me to have the members uh, join the channel, which is, if you've seen any of my videos at the end, I thank the patrons, uh, which is the same sort of thing. The patrons, uh, the patrons support the fish basement builds and help me do more things down here. And I thank them at the end, and there's uh, benefits that go along with that. So what I've done now is just extended those benefits from patron, Patreon to YouTube. So there's the same two tiers, both in YouTube and Patreon, which is member and enthusiast, and they have specific benefits with them. Now, YouTube requires that I put a video out letting you know what they are, and I thought, well, I'll do that in this video, but let me also make it a members-only, behind-the-scenes, you know, early access kind of video, just like I do for my Patreons, uh, so you can experience what it's like and see if it's something you care about or if the regular videos are good enough. But if you, you know, if you want the extra nitty-gritty stuff, then this is for you. So let's let's start by checking out the Aquarium Domain store. Okay, so all my pigs, all those big cichlids, they like to eat. So we have quite a supply of aquarium foods uh, for them. We have supplements over here for plants and of course test kits and medicines because you never know when you're going to have a sickness so you got to be prepared ahead of time. Uh, up top is mostly just extra equipment, pumps and heaters, sponge filters, just things you know uh, tubing whatnot, bulkheads. Uh, speaking of that down here just lots and lots of uh, Lots and lots of bulkheads, filter fluff, all that good stuff. Old lighting parts, you name it, tubing. Uh, just everything it takes to keep a fish basement running. And of course, the grow out aquarium for the uh, 3000 gallon. You know what, let's uh, throw some food in there and see if the little cichlids are hungry. All right, let's see if any little cichlids are uh, interested in eating some food. It right, looks like they are. Little beasts are always hungry, but uh, it's good. Uh, need to grow them up as fast as possible so I can get them into the 3,000 gallon, which is gonna be their future home. But uh, for now, this 100 gallons is what they call home. And uh, as you can see, they are uh, ravenous little eaters. So shouldn't be any, shouldn't be no time at all before they're ready to graduate to the big tank. Okay, just a little warning. We're gonna be heading out from behind the 3,000 out into the fish basement. And there's po a high probability of spoilers out there. Uh, these behind the scenes videos, member only videos, there's a lot of spoilers, a lot of showing you stuff that's coming from, you know, well up, well down the road. So you, you get a lot of early access. So if you don't want that, stop watching now. But if you're interested in uh, what's going on right now, and you know, again, spoilers, let's go. All right, as we come out from behind the 3000 gallon, we're greeted with the 150 and the sound of water. What is that? Oh, Predator Bay is getting refilled. That means, the glass fix is complete. The silicone is cured. It's the moment of truth, part two, <laughs> filling it back up. So, uh, all right, Predator Bay, as you can see, it's coming back, but let's let's pivot back. The 150 gallon, uh, this is, if you remember, the reef aquarium with no quote unquote filtration. It, uh, of course, has lighting and a power head, but uh, it doesn't have any traditional filtrate, or I should say, any manufacturer filtration. There's no, there's no skimmer, there's no wet dry. There is simply live rock, refugium, and lots and lots of invertebrates. I call it my invert powered filtration system. And uh, it, this, remember this started from scratch five months ago, we're in the fifth month. So while it is not perfect, it's not dialed in yet, it is coming along. It is getting very, very stable, starting to really, really look like a reef tank and uh there is been no fatalities no crashes no you know no anything bad just just the slow process of evolving into a full-fledged reef let's see if these guys are hungry all right a little midday feeding for the boys everyone's coming out of the reef even our little reclusive gobies poking out of their cave grab some food as it goes by 
but yeah, everybody. So like I said, no fatalities or anything. No, no, you know, no problems of any kind. Just, just a slow grind of let the invertebrates do their thing, letting the bacteria with all the live rock do their thing, and just keep dosing um, using the refusion one and two. Uh, we're getting all that rock that was all bright white, just dead base rock is now all coated you know, with corals taking root uh, and all the fish looking good and, and doing great. So uh, I can't be more pleased with this. Um, I think it's, it's a good lesson that uh, you can't rush nature, even if you have a bunch of, uh, you can mask it a little bit with uh, a lot of brute force filtration, lots of water changes, but at the end of the day, it just takes time for these tanks to establish. I mean. To be this far in less than six months is, is really good. I mean, because in my opinion, a reef doesn't really get solid till like a year in, you know, maybe even two, I mean, before they get rock solid. But uh, this one is, is doing great at five months and uh, I don't see anything but uh, positive improvement uh, from here. All right, a little bit of a spoiler alert on the 265, which is the in-wall part of the 1500 gallon system. So there are a lot of new fish in here. Uh, that I haven't shown yet, and I haven't really decided on the exact identity of this aquarium yet, but I think it's going to be sort of a, a mixed Fowler reef kind of thing, uh, whereas the 150 be pure reef, and eventually the 600 that's growing out the Predator Bay fish will be a reef slope. At least that's the plan as of now. <clears throat> as you can see, uh, I've always talked that I love triggers, and there's been a, a few additions here, uh, Indian black trigger and a blue throat trigger so they, they've been in here a while they're doing great um, the they're while they're triggers uh, they are pretty peaceful and they do quite well with the you know community fish and smaller fish um, you know they don't take any guff from anybody but they generally don't uh, give out too much either uh, certainly uh, no more than the uh, Emperor Angel does you know in terms of being a bit of a tank boss but they really do get along well uh, haven't had any problems and uh, as you can see here too, now that we've got the, the base rocks been in here a while and we've been dosing regularly again, we're getting all of that coralline algae buildup on the rock. Tank is getting reseasoned. If you recall, this is the tank that's been running for 11 years. Uh, there's been, you know, changes over that time, but overall it has been running a long time, but it's kind of been redone recently. It, it took a uh, back seat when I was finishing the rest of the basement and, you know, got a little bit overgrown but uh we're bringing it back again we're using uh invertebrates uh there is no filtration on this as either you know no quote unquote filtration there is a giant 700 gallon refugium behind it oh and i take that back i'm wrong there's a protein skimmer there's a big protein skimmer uh, on this tank so yeah so it's refugium protein skimmer and invert powered um which is my preferred method for salt water the 150 you know if the footprint of it was right i probably would put a skimmer in there but the way it is, I'm going without the skimmer um, and it's been working great. But uh, protein skimmers are excellent, uh, but I just don't like a whole lot of the overtop stuff because I, I want a more natural, slow, predictable system where I'm using nature's methods to control it rather than uh, using a bunch of equipment and you know maybe be able to push the limits because you've got all this extra equipment, but I'd rather understock uh, and have something that's just more stable in general. But so, the, a lot of things coming for this system, the whole 1500 gallon system is gonna go through a lot of change because you know we're gonna be moving the inhabitants of the 600 over to Predator Bay, who is still filling. So the 600 is gonna get completely redone and the 265 is in the process of being restocked. So lots of change here. So I could go show you the 265, or the 600, sorry, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to save that for a Predator Bay video because that's where they're headed. So the 125, you recall the last thing we did here was uh, we put in the recycled sump or recycled material sump for our broken FX6 or 5 or whatever it was. Um, everything's going good. Uh, I have actually made the extensions for the lights. I have two of those down here. I just need to screw them on they're going to go on either side of here and then i'm gonna have a second light and spread those out but uh other than that uh just waiting for that to happen the uh, future's getting cleared up uh, you might see the eggshells down there that is to supplement calcium to the aquarium uh they're starting to build the plant stock back up it is not completely built back up yet but uh i am working on it and uh and when i was testing one of the things i was low on was some calcium 
So I, you know, made some eggs for breakfast, cleaned the eggs off, put them in there, and I'm starting to see some uh, new growth. So I'm happy about that. And it's, uh, I like to dose that way if I can, where you buffer it. That way the water will actually break apart the, the calcium in the eggshell over time on its own. Uh, so it's sort of, in a way, it uses the minimum it needs. You know, it's probably not optimal. Well, it's certainly not optimal, but you're also not going to overdo it either. So uh, either way, it is definitely the, the lazy man's way of doing it. But uh, 125, doing good. Back to being my easy tank. Nice and enjoyable. And really just working on building the plant stock back up. And, uh, and I won't be using it as a rehab tank for plants anytime soon. All right, the 3,000 gallon is doing great, except for I cranked the lights up to 14 hours a day because I really wanted to grow all these new plants in, and they have grown massively, but I have also got algae. So unfortunately, when you're missing a nutrient uh, and the plants slow down their growth and you have all that light, well, the algae keeps going because it only needs a single uh, a single fuel. So it needs either nitrite or, or nitrate or, um, <clears throat> you know, just a ammonia any anything right it's going to be able to grow versus plants need a more broad spectrum so i have uh the lighting cut back to 10 uh and i am dosing for the plants again so it's just a matter of time now for this to dial it back but i got the plant growth i want so once the uh filtration upgrade is done it'll be ready to do a big video uh on the 3000 gallon and hopefully by that time we have the new fish as well and the 220. The 220 is actually, this is one where this is one of those real forward down the road uh, behind the seat or spoilers. The 220 is too small for these fish. I don't, you know, it's it's a big tank, but the, the, the angels, when they get big and these geophagus and just kind of the way I want it to be, it's not going to cut it for me. So I'm actually going to be building another freshwater tank. Actually, I'm going to be building two new freshwater tanks. Uh, they're both going to be DIY builds, and they're both going to be extensively bigger uh, than this aquarium. Uh, and they will, like I said, they'll both be freshwater. At least one of them is going to be the new home for the Amazon, Amazonian jungle. So instead of the 220 Amazonian jungle, it's going to be the, well, I won't give it away, but the much, much bigger uh, version of that. And uh, that will leave us this aquarium to be repurposed. It's going to stay freshwater, um, and, but uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be some other aquascape, some other fish. So, you know, that'll be cool. Kind of like with the 600 with the salt system, you know, when you build something new and you move fish over, that kind of that gives you that tank to redo again and a uh, whole new thing. So uh, I don't, I keep most of the fish I like, but not everything. So uh, that's kind of the goal is to have enough tanks to keep all the stuff that I really like. I don't want to keep things just for the sake of keeping them. Uh, so once I have a system, an ecosystem, or a biotype for everything that I'm interested in, then that's, uh, that's when I know I have enough tanks. And then regardless of who's staying in here, I'm going to redo the sump uh, just like the 125, uh, clean up down there, and uh, have a much bigger sump with you know, the refugium, the plant refugium, plant, plant vegetable filter in the middle as well. So that's the future of the 220. So not only is that the feature of the 220, but that's a couple spoilers on some up and coming aquariums that are going to be in a whole new room in the fish basement. Uh, it's not ready yet, but when it is, it's going to house uh, those two new freshwater aquariums. And to give you an idea how big they are, the two of them are going to take up the whole room. So uh, they're going to be pretty big. Uh, there will also be DIY builds. They're um, repurposing uh, some materials I already have, and I don't want to give away too much on it, but I think they'll be pretty exciting. I'm pretty excited for them. And it's gonna get the fish basement uh, more balanced. Right now we have, even though we have the, the giant 3000, which is fresh water, we're starting to get quite a few salt tanks. We have more salt than fresh. Uh, this is gonna tip that scale back, and we are going to have uh, five freshwater aquariums and only four salt water. Uh, and trust me, these new ones will be on par with uh, the biggest stuff I have here. So they'll be uh, well worth it. Uh, well worth the wait, and uh, I think I think I'm gonna be able to do just a crazy version of the tank behind me in the tank they're going into. I'm uh, gonna be able to expand that quite a bit, and I think it's gonna give the natural feel to the fish, like how the 3000 does to these big cichlids, where they just they act so different, so much differently than they do when they're put in a smaller tank. So uh, it's just gonna be uh, oh, it's gonna be crazy. I love it. Uh, I can't wait, and <laughs> uh, but it is a ways off. So uh, I have to move stuff that's in there out and I have to prep the room. So 
Not coming right away, but, but you know, it is coming. All right. I get entirely too uh, excited for this fish stuff, but what the hell? I love it. All right, so uh, that's a behind the scenes video. That's an example of uh, what one of them would be like. Uh, obviously, when I'm doing projects, there's a lot of, you know, early access stuff on that. But uh, let me give you a quick rundown of uh, what the becoming a member on YouTube for Aquarium Domain gets you. Uh, uh, gives you a shout out at the end of the videos along with the patrons. Shout out the uh, YouTube members. Gets you Discord access to the Aquarium Domain Discord server. You can pick my brain for 37 plus years of fish keeping experience. If it's an area where uh, things I keep, I have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. Uh, if it's another area, maybe less so, but I'll do my best to help you out if I can. And of course, there's other uh, fish keepers on there. So uh, get to meet them and hopefully build a decent community of uh, like-minded fish keepers. Uh, you get uh, these behind the scenes, member only videos, early access, the whole nine yards, you know, whatever these tend to be. They're about usually about once a month or so. And they're just with whatever's going on um, in the fish basement. And they get you uh, the badges and emojis and all the things that show you're a member. So when you comment and chat, it gives you all that stuff. And then it comes with a base package. And then as an enthusiast, you get uh, uh, part. You get to be in the swag bag drawing. So there's a, a drawing for the YouTube enthusiast and for the Patreon enthusiast. So two swag bags a month will go out uh, to whoever wins uh, that drawing, you know, random drawing each month. Uh, it starts when we have 12 enthusiasts on each one, uh, Patreon and YouTube. All right, so what is the swag bag? This is the contents of the Inquiry to Main Enthusiast swag bag. So this is, like I said, once a month, uh, one of these swag bags will be given away to the a YouTube member enthusiast, and then one, once a month, one will be given away to the Patreon uh, member enthusiast. So it's only available to that tier, and uh, it's the only way to get this stuff. Once a month, it gets given away, or if there's some sort of a you know special giveaway. And as you can see, it, it tracks the finest fishy fellows, Lenticulata Pikes, Oscars, everybody's coming to check out the swag bag. They like it. Uh, so what is it exactly? It is a coffee cup. A Aquarium Domain branded coffee cup. I use this all the time. I can attest that it works excellent. Uh, of course, there will be a couple of Aquarium Domain stickers in there and an actual bag. So the swag bag does include an actual bag. Um, we'll put the things in the bag so they don't get all wrinkled up, but that's up to you. Uh, very disturbing to the Oscar to hear that, but uh, he'll get over it. Uh, obviously a t-shirt. Uh, again, you let me know this. So the winner will let me know their size and uh, you will get the t-shirt in your size. Uh, I think I can go up to like 3X and as small as a small. And then lastly, a uh, Aquarium Domain towel. So it, it has a uh, the little hook. You can hook it up on the uh, pan belt loop or whatnot. And when you're working in the fish room, you always got a dry towel hanging down at your side. Again, I can test. It works great. I've used it many times. But uh, that makes up the uh, swag bag. And that's the swag bag giveaway for the enthusiast here. And uh, lastly, you get uh, YouTube enthusiasts get to request uh, behind the scenes, like specialty videos. Like, for example, if there's an area you really want me to go deep into, something I could never probably put out as uh, just a regular video, I make those videos and they're available to all the members, but they're based on the requests from the enthusiast member. So if let's just say there's an enthusiast member who really wants to see down and dirty inside the 700 gallon refugium, then we'll we'll get in there, you know, we'll get the camera underwater, we'll see what's going on, we'll, we'll deep dive into how that whole thing works, you know, and then all the other members will benefit from it because it'll be a member only uh, video. So it'll be in the community tab, there'll be links to member only videos so only members can see them, they'll be unlisted. Uh, so they don't kill me in the YouTube algorithm for being too specific, but uh, it allows me to go super specific uh, for those who want to see it. All right, so that's it. And uh, I think I need to get back to uh, getting Predator Bay filled up here.